Hi, hello everyone. I know it's a bit hard after lunch to come and listen to a presentation, so I'll try to make it a bit interesting. Uh, my name is Zidane. I'm coming from uh, Tel Aviv in Israel. Uh, I work for a company called Applicaster. Uh, we create a mobile application for the TV industry. Our uh, targeted audience is mainly commercial broadcasters. Um, let's just go through about a couple of things that we do. Uh, Applicaster provides solution for the TV industry for the past uh, five years. Uh, we have experience over uh, video delivery, live streaming, video on demand, of course. And for the recent, I think, two or three years, we started going into uh, a new term that's called second screen. Second screen was something not, familiar, not uh, too familiar in the past uh, two years. And since video became a bit of a commodity, Applicaster decided to go into the next level of uh, mobile apps in the TV industry, and this is second screen. Second screen means how your users interact with your TV shows in a day-to-day basis using these mobile apps. So some of the customers and references and projects that we did in the past uh, couple of years, and the majority or our, our platform is a white label platform. We do mobile apps, backend management system to support it. And why we are white label and not starting our own brand and, and promoting it? Because we know that customers are mainly commercial broadcasters, want to own the brand, own the users, and eventually own the revenues. So the TV industry, uh, when you say TV industry and you usually think about you know, the normal TV set, the family sits in the living room and very excited about watching something, and of course, something to eat while you're watching it. But then, eventually, the last three or four years came these devices. Now, when you look at it, Nothing is wrong. You can mirror your content on the TV, you can watch your iPad, your iPhone, and your favorite show on the go. But what happens next is that your content is being, so let's say, cannibalized. Today, uh, TV uh, broadcasters don't want their content to be across verbal uh, mobile devices, and they want the users to uh, regain more, atten more retention into the um, um, TV shows. So, while well, watching these, uh, um, the content onto the device itself, it doesn't hold up. Users need to see something different in today's uh, new technology. So we think that today, mobile or TV actually needs a winner. Now you can actually interact with the TV show using these devices. If until now, what we had with the TV was a lean forward, lean back experience that you just sit based on your sofa watching and consuming the TV content. Today, in uh, the mobile device world, you can actually have a lean forward experience. You can actually interact with the show and play along with the show. And let's talk a bit about the market itself. The TV industry or the commercial TV industry is comprised mainly of ad spend or TV ad spend. And today, the majority of ad spend is still the TV. More than 50% of, of the ad spend is still on TV. Although we have internet and we have newspapers and apps, still the majority is uh, based on TV. And how we utilize it and how we help our customers make it happen. So there are two scenarios where we help our customers. One of them, of course, is on the go, how you create great applications to consume content. Could be HBO Go in the US, if you're familiar with, any broadcaster, any cable operator, place their content on the app so you can consume while you're at work, while you're on the go. But how we address it while watching TV. And this is something very interesting, because today, when you watch a top-rated show like X Factor, like The Voice, like Got Talent, how do you interact? How do you make your users come back again and again every week to consume their content? How do you differentiate yourself from other TV shows? And, and last, actually last week or uh, on Sunday, in the US, a new show uh, also from Israel came in. It's called The Rising Star. It was a huge hit in Israel. It's another talent show, very similar to American Idol, very similar to X Factor. But the difference is that actually users were the ones who voted from the app, and there were the judges. From the app themselves, you could vote if you like the, uh, uh, the singer, yes or no, and they were the one who actually deciding whether or not the contestant is moving on for the next phase. So we're trying to address two different scenarios, and I think that while watching TV is even more interesting, because the majority, or as you can see, Google said that more than 81% of smart device owners, if I own a smart device, any type of smartphone or tablet, I actually use it while I'm watching TV. But I'm not necessarily using it the, uh, everything that related to content. Maybe I'm on my uh, email, on Facebook, or Twitter. And what Applicaster is trying to do is interact, making sure that you're interacting with the content on the mobile device. So let's give an example of a show cycle. Um, today, and The Voice is a very good showcase because we did The Voice in several countries, in the Netherlands, in Spain, in Mexico, and in Israel. Um, when the show starts, you can easily send the push notification. And we're trying to, by the way, to utilize the simple tools that we all know from the mobile field. 
So push notification notifying that the show is about to start in the next couple of minutes and tune in so you can uh, order a pizza from the application. And Domino's is the one who's sponsoring it because they're trying to generate more revenues. During the show, um, you can interact on the device itself and ask a different question. What do you think the, the, the next singer will, uh, will he move to the next round, yes or no? Or if it's the voice, who do you think will turn first to the judge? So we're trying to create different interactions on the mobile device that are related to the TV show, so the 100% of the user's attention will be aimed towards the content, towards the brand. Of course, after the show, once prime time is over, when you turn off the TV, usually you take your iPhone or iPad, this is what I do, take it to bed so I can continue reading, working, or do something else. You can actually create more uh, user engagement through the uh, application by having live streaming or other activities, not on TV, but in the uh, application itself. And of course, we're trying to create always a pre-season mode that if, let's say, one show was ended or the season was ended, how you can create user-generated content by submitting your audition for the next round or for the next season. Uh, let's run through a bit about our solution and what we're covering. So maybe like uh, Painter, the, the app themselves, the, the broadcaster's app, are Applicaster's Canvas. Um, and we're co providing this solution. The three major pillars of the Applicaster's solution is comprised of content, could be video delivery, um, could be a live streaming. Interaction, which are our core business, the live activities that you can have. You can vote for someone, you can play with someone, you can bet with someone straight from the mobile device interacting with the TV. And of course, generating social discussion around these apps on Facebook and Twitter. On top of it, we have another layer, of course, of advertising, of analytics, push notification, backend management system that broadcasters in real time can actually interact and update the content of the application while they're watching. I, I heard a very interesting uh, um, lecture a couple of uh, uh, lectures ago from uh, Ono developers, and they, they mentioned how you can, in real time, you can actually update the app and make sure that your content is being updated. You don't need to resubmit the app. That's what we're trying to do, building a management system for the broadcaster that, in real time, you can actually interact with the show, update the content, making sure that everything that is in the app is up to date as it is. Some of our features that are um, uh, working very successfully now uh, over the world, we're working in uh, various uh, territories in Latin America, in the US, in Europe, and um, in Singapore. The feed, feed is something that you might be familiar from, of course, Facebook and Twitter, but in other applications that you have. The feed itself is an aggregation of uh, social networks, Facebook and Twitter, that are all related to the show. And this is uh, what we call the stage. While you're watching a show, you have the feed itself, because we don't want to distract our users or our viewers while they're watching, let's say, the X Factor as an example. So we don't want to mirror the content. We want to provide live streaming within the app. We want to provide additional content. And this could be different questions, different consultations, activities. Uh, and there, and, and you can, um, um, we can hear your voice. You can say whatever you want to say and post on the feed of the application. Another interesting integration that we did into the broadcaster workflow is while you answer different polls or quizzes from the app itself, what happens next? What happens if I'm voting from the app how am I seeing it in action on the show? So, uh, and, and the integration that we've created with different companies that create on-screen graphics, I know how much you're familiar with, uh, different companies like VizRT or Orad, they're displaying the results on top of the screen. So what we did with an integration straight from the application, all the results going automatically onto this uh, on-screen graphic uh, tool, and then the broadcaster can easily upload the results, as you can see here in the small image, and even more, we can get not just results, but let me show you a different example that we did in Spain. I'm assuming you all know the format Survivor. It's a very good show. It's, I think it's like the 25th season in the US. It's a very familiar and successful show. But it's a pre-recorded show, OK? So they're recording the show for one, two, three months, and then editing, and then just showing to the public every week a different episode. Now, in Spain, they wanted to interact and integrate something with user, with live users' activities within the show. So what they did, they have a live studio once a week, showing the pre-recorded show in the studio itself, but asking the users what they think will happen next. So everything happened inside the application. And again, with the application integration, we managed to overlay the results on a huge LED screen inside the studio. And the faces that you see are in the show in, in, in a second, the, the video itself. The pictures that you see are Facebook profile pictures of the users who actually voted. And now you'll see how it was in real time. It's in Spanish, though, so just take a look. Tenemos el resultado de la pregunta de la aplicación. Recordamos la pregunta. ¿Puede Pascual 
saludar a sus ex compañeros en la palapa, sí o no. Vamos a ver la pantalla qué es lo que lo. Tenemos el resultado de la pregunta de la aplicación. Recordamos la pregunta. ¿Puede Pascual saludar a sus ex compañeros en la palapa? Sí o no. Vamos a ver la pantalla qué es lo que la audiencia ha decidido. So they ask a simple question, yes ya sabéis or no, que todos los que votáis vuestra contestant will be able este to communicate pantallón. with his friend and after the users voted, the accumulation of the result. These are all the Facebook users, the viewers watching from home. And this has been generated on the fly in real time. So the idea is to show the results and show the viewers that what they are voting for actually what they are voting for is actually being seen on the TV. They're not just interacting for the sake of interaction or for the sake of the broadcaster, in this case, uh, Mediaset or Telecinco say, we did real-time integration or real-time interaction, but they wanted to show and display the results so you will see your face on TV. And of course, viewers like to see that and like to do it. And that's why they're coming again and again every show. I'll jump into something a bit different. As, as I mentioned, applicants are taking different, different technology advantage and trying to manipulate it into the TV industry. So what we did here is something very interesting, and I'll speak, and I'll let the video speak for itself. Amanda, will you marry me? Oh, Rich, I just don't know anymore. Oh, she's calling a lawyer. Cancel restraining order. No way. She's calling Steve. She never got over him. Honey, don't marry him. He's still sleeping with Carmen. Mm hmm. <laughs> Carmen? Sounds crazy. What? For millions of viewers worldwide, this is already a reality. Crossmates. An exciting cross-platform experience that creates a personal connection between TV heroes and audiences. So, how does it work? In line with the TV show's plot, viewers receive communications from their favorite characters straight to their personal mobile devices. The heroes communicate while the show is on or off the air, strengthening the relationship with the viewer and building anticipation for the next episode. Crossmates provides a two-way conversation experience where audiences can interact with their heroes in the same way they interact with their close friends. Text with photos, questions and consultations, with voice messages and even videos. Like in any friendship, the relationship develops over time and characters can learn personal details about their viewers and integrate them into the conversation. Crossmates' guiding principle is that each viewer can only follow one character, so they each get different pieces of the story. This drives the viewers to share information with each other, making sure your show is all they talk about all day. The more active a viewer is, the more he gains, as devoted users are rewarded with secret information and prizes. Crossmates also provides the perfect opportunity to improve relations with your sponsors as characters can integrate sponsored products into the conversation and provide their followers with discounts and coupons. It can even remind them to tune in and watch your show. Crossmates is adjustable to all TV formats. Drama, sitcom, reality shows, teen series, or even cartoons. As long as there are characters in the story, Crossmates will make them a part of your viewers' lives. Crossing platforms, crossing boundaries, Crossmates. Okay, so I think a video made a pretty good uh, demonstration of how we can utilize mobile apps and interact and create new ways or new formats. Now, it's not really a new format because we took, uh, and let me just jump to the statistic. We took different drama shows, which is very basic, drama or telenovelas we started in Mexico, are here for, for quite a while now. And in Latin America, telenovelas are a huge hit. And what we did is just interacting with the top four, top five characters, and users could actually follow the characters. And they thought these are real friends, and they're sending them 
own personal messages. And, I'll, and if we have more, if we have more time, I'll show you even one testimonial from one of our, uh, a viewer how they actually thought that the, the, um, the characters send them push notification. They wanted them to send more because they thought they didn't like them. So it was very interesting to see. Now you can see here the numbers that this, uh, uh, this was deployed, by the way, in four different, not just countries, but four different continents. It was uh, in Mexico, in the US, in Spain, and in Singapore across four different shows. It creates huge, huge, huge discussion around Facebook and Twitter, even more than the day-to-day -day discussion they had around the different shows. It created more active users, more new users in the app, because users actually came in every day to check their messages. They would receive push notifications saying, your friend just sent you an image, your friend just posted a video. So just like a, face, uh, a friend that is posting you uh, messages over WhatsApp or video over WhatsApp, the characters actually send them personal messages, not just during the show, but in the morning, they said good morning. At night, they send them messages or videos of themselves or the characters uh, uh, going to party or going to a friend or going to shopping. So this was very interesting. This is one of the testimonials, also in Spanish, but with translation. And we didn't pay her nothing, I promise. Now, at the beginning, we thought that too many messages will disrupt the users and users will delete the app. But eventually, users wanted more and more. They said it's not enough. And it, it started with three or four messages a day. And we ended up in Mexico sending almost 10 messages a day with different images, videos, and consultations. So just to sum up a bit of, of what we talked about, we're trying to create not just new ways for the broadcaster to increase his user engagement, to bring users back to the TV screen, to the main TV screen, because we're trying actually to control the eyeballs. The device is there. We, we, we told our customers for the last five years, don't try to fight it. The devices are here, and users will watch it or use it while watching TV. So let's just now utilize it for your own sake. So make sure that the devices are sending the eyeballs back to the TV screen using different features and different options that you have. Trying to create new ways of revenues, sending push notifications sponsored by Domino's Pizza, creating new types of ideas for customers to generate income, not just with a basic TV ad that you see um, every day. And at the end, of course, enrich the content, give the users new ways to interact, new ways, or actually new ways to consume TV. Because TV hasn't been changed for the last, let's say, 50 years. Since it was changed from black and white to color TV, and now maybe the quality is just increasing, HD and 4K. But now this device is actually changing the reality of how we're consuming the content. And that's what Applicaster is trying to do with our customers in a day-to-day. -day. Thank you very much for listening.